So welcome everyone, I'm Tom, one of the co-founders at London Filmed, and this is our very first session of Tech Bytes. In these sessions, we will be bringing you the latest tech as the event industry evolves through 2021 and beyond. The sessions are short, sweet, free-flowing and informative and a bit fun. So to kick things off today, I've got two members of the Glissa team. Uh, Vanessa, I'll, I'll start with you. Hi, yeah, I'm Vanessa at Glissa. It's really awesome to be here today. Thank you very much for inviting us. Um, I spent 15 years working as an event organizer before joining Glissa and was working on virtual and hybrid events long before the pandemic hit. So plenty of experience in what it's like to actually set these up and run them. And now using that experience with the Glissa team to make sure that people get the most out of using a virtual and hybrid event platform. So that's what I do. Nardos, maybe you could introduce what you do. Hi, I'm Nardos. I've, uh, I'm a sales manager here at Glissa. I've been in the company just under two years. So have seen uh, live events, hybrid events, virtual events. So seen it all, if you will. Um, so yeah, happy to have a chat with anyone who's looking into um, hybrid events for 2021. Fantastic. And we've got a working relationship. So London Film, we've worked with Glissa uh, over the back end of last year. But I'd like to start, and maybe Vanessa, I'll start with you. If you could maybe just give us a bit of an overview of, of Glissa, uh, a bit of a product over, overview, when you yep. started and, and where you're based, that'd be fab. Yes, great question. So we actually started, I think it's coming up to seven years ago, so long before Nardos or I were uh, involved. And actually Glissa started as a tool to be used at live events for engaging the audience with the speakers and with the content. So through using polling and sort of interactivity tools and techniques. Wind on to now, we've taken all of that knowledge and actually created a massively evolved virtual and hybrid event platform, which is really all about engaging the attendees so that it's not just a one-way street. You're not just watching something online, you're actually getting involved in it and contributing even to the content at times too. Uh, so we started out in London, which is where we still have the sort of larger team at the moment, but we've also got a really strong contingency in the, um, contingent, sorry, in the US, which uh, is growing really fast actually. So it's quite feasible that by the end of this year, there may be more people in the US for Glissa than there are in the UK. So kind of half and half, I guess we could probably say at the moment. That's great. Uh, and whereabouts in, in America? Are we, are we talking New York? Oh, another good question. So it was New York. Yes, we had an office in New York, but actually that closed physically last year for very obvious reasons. Um, and now actually we're hiring people all over the um, US. So we've got people West Coast and East Coast and almost everywhere in between as well, time zones wise. So very well spread. Fantastic. We're just about to embark on our first deal out in the States as well, which is going to cover off New York, mm -hmm. LA, Boston and DC. So we're super excited about that. Albeit yeah. it's tentative times to get over there, um, but we're looking forward to that. Um, so that's, that's a fantastic background on Glissa. And, and like I said, we've worked with Glissa before as a platform. Uh, I think in Autodesk in particular, which was a week long event, which was super fantastic. And uh, they, they love the platform and will actually be using it again this year in 2021. Yes. Um, so, so Nardos, maybe over to you, um, and I know we've chatted at detail over the phone and also with Berger at lunch when we were allowed to do that. <laughs> um, but do you have, um, it'd be interesting just to dig into if you have uh, any specific sectors that you focus on, um, you know, through the platform or any specific events that you, you tend to target? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what, I think that Berger was... Uh our biggest bonder um, <laughs> um, when we first met. But yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of our clients, we've literally got um, clients from all shapes and sizes. Um, we don't really have a specific sector we go to because I think um, Glissa works and adapts really well in all types of situations from training sessions to large conferences with hundreds and thousands of people as well. So um, I can't give you an exact sector, but we, we've done it all. Um, I think Vanessa, you could probably jump in and uh, give a bit of support from the clients that you've worked with uh, since you've joined. But I know that um, from my client side, we've uh, done webinars, training sessions, uh, small workshops, roundtables. Uh, we've even run like multi-day, uh, multiple breakout room sessions. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, really large conferences as well. Yeah, and everything Nardos says is, is correct. I think actually sort of the best way to pinpoint who Glissa works really well for is actually around what people are trying to achieve with their events. So if they're looking for engagement and interactivity and actually to have their attendees sort of getting involved 
then we're a brilliant fit. If it's more of a watch and learn, then you can probably use a different tool. So I think it really comes down to what people are trying to achieve with their events and um, sort of corporate event planners are probably the most commonplace people who we work with overall. So sort of large organisations right up to sort of major enterprise size who want to make their meetings, be they for investors or for their internal teams, you know, as meaningful as and as impactful as possible. Sure. And I, I think so to summarize, you're kind of sector agnostic, but it's really the engagement element you focus on. So where especially I guess that's a really nice fit as we move back into the hybrid environment. So looking yep. forward to seeing that in play. Um, Hit the nail on the head there, Tom. Nail on the head. Um, <laughs> So moving on, and Vanessa, perhaps I'll come back to you here to kick this one off. But, um, you know, I think what the pandemic has done is fast forwarded technology, you know, three, four years. Um, and it'd be fantastic to just hear a little bit more about what you're adding to the platform in 2021. Yeah, I mean, you say three or four years, I think others would probably say 10, to be honest. <laughs> it's been radically fast. Um, in, just in the six months that I've joined, the platform is almost unrecognisable because the okay. speed thing of uh, change and, and evolution but I can keep this really simple there is one feature that we are super pumped about because it is going to make our customers lives so much easier uh, and that is the release of our own video streaming service so whether you want to do broadcasting or you want to do sort of video style conversation like this where everybody can actually contribute and get involved we've created a streaming service that will enable both of those so it's called glissa stream it goes live in about five days time yeah five days time exactly um and it, honestly i just i can't tell you what a huge difference this is going to make to all of our customers lives it's literally going to cut hours of effort out of their days when it comes to occurring these events so we're really really pumped about that that's the main one to be heard. and um if i can just add to that as well i think the main um contributor to our roadmap is our customers so we love getting feedback listening to what they need what they want um, out of the platform um and working on that so like vanessa said since um, since COVID started um, and even over the last few months we've just got so many new uh, features that we've added just to make that uh, these events like simpler and easier for the organizers to to plan but also for the attendees to get the most out of uh, when they're joining as well. Yeah that's so important because um, I mean there's there's so many uh, tech developments through the event sector happening all the time it's really about simplifying the customer journey so 100% agree with you on that. Um, not as hopefully an easy one for you, so let, let's see. But um, in terms of capacity, which is a question we get all the time, uh, you know, we're agnostic, we sit in the middle, we try and help our clients find the best platforms and build solutions around them. Um, but it'd be good to know what, from your perspective, what's the sort of max capacity within the platform and perhaps also a, a minimum capacity, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty easy. Uh, in terms of minimum, we have none <laughs> um we've got clients that are using it for like i said earlier uh, small sessions so single sessions that um have about 30 or 40 people uh, interacting with each other uh, and then we've got large events um, in the thousands uh, really um in terms of maximum ca capacity of the platform uh, i know we've tested uh, for up to 100,000 attendees uh, and what i mean by that is low testing so we hammer the platform with comments and poll questions and multiple we actually we tested to 173,000 last week i was online with an event yesterday that had over 12,000 attendees uh, the, there's no uh, the platform stability is absolutely fine it, we really have no no concerns on that front <laughs> yeah, really, i'd was... say that I was just about to say, I don't think we've found Glissa's limit yet. Um, and I, I think even that 174,000 is not the limit. Um, if we tested for more, we, prob we could probably reach it. Um, but yeah, so in terms of maximum capacity of attendees joining, we have none, <laughs> um, I should say. Um, and in terms of the platform, um, we do allow for multiple breakout rooms as well. I think that's yeah. one thing that a lot of our um, event organizers find really useful. So you can run a uh, session that's uh, multiple days long uh, with multiple breakout rooms happening like simultaneously um, and even have like topic rooms so on um, additional on-demand content uh, that you can incorporate in there as well um, and it's all all encompassed under one single url that attendees use to join so really simple um, access 
access point for participants as well. Yeah, and I can speak for first hand again, the experience from all the desk and the other events we've done with you, it's super easy to use, super intuitive. And I, and I think that's one of its nicest features, uh, to, to be honest. Um, so thanks for giving us a roundup on the capacity, 174,000. So it'll be a virtual, virtual Glastonbury Glister, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so question six, really important question, probably my favorite question. Um, for anyone planning a virtual or hybrid event, what are the top three tips you give them? And they might be different. You might have different tips, but I'd love to hear from you. What are the top three tips you give your clients? You go first, Nardas. You know what? No, I was just about to say, we've literally got a, an expert in here, so I'm not even going to attempt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this actually reminds me of, uh, I, I think you did like a vlog post uh, a while ago on LinkedIn, didn't you? When you, um, yeah, right. top three. There were a lot of tips in that. Yeah, one. top three goals. But yeah, Vanessa's literally the expert, so I'm just going to leave it to her. <laughs> um, or I, the first one, every time, and I think the team sometimes maybe think I'm a bit of a broken record on this, but I'm completely obsessed with this, is that your event goals have to be the number one priority at every step of your event journey. And I think during the course of 2020, with this radical change in the way events were handled and managed and delivered, people kind of lost sight of those goals sometimes and it went from being why are we doing this event to how are we doing this event and actually that still exists a little bit where people are looking at the tech first and then fitting their events into it and that needs to completely not be the case it needs to be the opposite way around why are we doing the event what's the point of it why does it matter why would people come like all of those really fundamental event questions that help you come up with your event goals and then at every step of your process you keep going back to those goals and sort of you know, identifying okay we're going to do this because it will help us achieve this goal for the event or it will help take us one step closer to achieving this goal of the event and I think that for me is like the number one piece of advice and just don't let go of it be like you know a dog with a bone as we say over um, in the UK you've got to really really be kind of as obsessive about it as I am perhaps. Um, the next two, I think at the moment, I would probably go with, it sounds quite boring, but it's really not. Um, project manage the life out of your event. <laughs> and this is, like I said, you know, it might sound a little bit dull, but the nature of the work has changed so much that actually I think event organizers are often now project managing a process that they don't really understand that well and that's where you've got to go back to basics on those core project management um, skills and assets and um, abilities that you have as an event organizer and just make sure that you're being super super rigorous about it allocating accountability allocating timelines because nothing kind of happens by accident in this current way that we're still navigating yeah, the newness of the event world so it sounds a little bit boring but i think there's something we probably working as a supplier for customers sometimes see a little bit of a gap on and I think is a good area for for improvement um, and then the last piece I think I think it's just be ambitious yeah it is it's just be ambitious because again last year there was a bit of we've got to do something something's better than nothing but I think we've got through that page now and we've turned that page even we're into the next chapter which is what can we actually achieve and how creative can we be with trying to achieve these goals and, and how much can we impress our audience because audience expectations you know they started kind of down here last March yeah. and they're already up here I don't know if you can even see my hand off the top of the screen but it, you know expectations have gone up and I think event organizers need to expand their ambition and horizons to to reflect that too so don't be crazy as in don't do things you don't need to do but you know, stretch your ability and your capability it's only yeah. going to be your skill set too sorry that was quite a long answer I no, know no, no, really really good answers and, and it kind of touched um on some of the things we do like project management is something we have put a lot of time into um because the workflow for virtual and hybrid are similar but very different so you have to be vigorous with with how you approach an event now that's super important um, and then that point you raise on creativity, you're, you're 100% right. We've gone from people wanting to execute to people going, okay, let's take our time. We actually want to create a brief now as opposed to just a proposal. Like, what can you do for us in and around the event? And I think that's a really important factor moving forward for events. Like events aren't going to be on, like, on the day. There's going to be a build up to them, yeah. an execution at the event, 
and then what happens after my event. That that's going to be really important moving forward. Completely agree. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It, you know, as much as the event industry has taken a hit, also super exciting for how events will be. You know, yeah. built. Through. I really, really think that in two or three years' time, the whole sector will be so much stronger as a result of this because. It being kind of frank, um, the event, the, the sort of standard of events in early 2020, so before the chaos hit, it all sort of got a bit samey, 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 you know, yeah. it was just the sort of routine that people went through. And actually, that will not wash anymore. <laughs> we have to be bigger and better and stronger. And attendees are going to be far more discerning about what they choose to attend in yeah. terms yeah. and what they want to prefer to do virtually. I just actually think the whole scope of the sector is going to explode, but we're yeah. on the edge of that and we, we've yet to see the explosion is how creative we choose to be with it is to be how big that explosion will be. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think we're just at the cusp of what people will start to explore for, for their events. Um, not as one for you, not, not as, as exciting, but uh, again, one uh, that is, is very important and a question we get a lot. Um, the analytics post event uh it'd be really good just to understand what they look like and how robust they are from glissa because more and more people want to know how many people attended how they attended what they engaged with um it would be it'd be super useful just to get a bit of an overview on that yeah absolutely um i think analytics is probably one of the main reasons um our clients do choose glissa um so in terms of the data that you gather um post event you get event level data then individual session level um data and then delve into um delegate level data as well so what we mean by that is session level a few of the high level numbers uh, in terms of how many attendees you had, the level of engagement and interaction that you had across that. Uh, but then go in to each individual attendee as well and actually see how they engaged with your session. Did they ask questions? How yeah. they responded in uh, different surveys or polls you might have pushed out? Um, how they also interacted with the content that you're pushing out as well, which is really, really important because I think that's one of the passive um, interaction that no one gets to see. You're sharing all this content, but how yeah. much is it resonating with, uh, with, with your delegates? Um, so you can actually track who downloaded um, any of the content that you've shared, whether it's presentations in a session or on demand uh, content you might have added in, um, in your topic area, for example. So um, it's really, really uh, detailed um, and it's all exportable again um, as CSV infographic or uh, you can actually export it into um, a couple of uh, CRM systems that we've we've integrated with as well. So really simple for the organizers post events, just a click of a button. They don't need to kind of ramage through uh, a, a bunch of data that <laughs> that, um, that they wouldn't have been able to get to. Uh, and I think um, Mike, our CEO, which you've met Tom, he comes from a background of um, marketing. Um, and this is actually a really interesting story that um, I love hearing about because when he did work as a uh, CMO uh, before coming up with Glissa, he used to hire a, an intern to go through like uh, feedback survey forms um, and actually collate the data. So Glissa kind of came from his frustration of dealing with uh, with, with the amount of data that they used to get and having to hire a person just to deal with it. So yeah. this simplifies the whole process. It seems mad thinking about that now, but I, I think that's one of the biggest step changes I've seen is people wanting to understand in depth how their um, event has been engaged with. Yeah. Because they are looking for real tangible ROI and they haven't the report back to key stakeholders in a more granular manner. So I think it's super important moving forward and, and something that you can actually used to shout about post the event as well in a, in a more granular manner. Absolutely. Uh, and um, with ROI, actually, um, we've got uh, one part of the analytics is our engagement index score. So this is something completely unique to Glissa. It's a secret algorithm uh, that takes, <laughs> I say secret because uh, I don't want you to ask me to explain it, but <laughs> it basically uh, takes into account every uh, touch point. So. Uh, uh, being able to download content, uh, people asking questions, people uh, responding in your polls and gives you a, an average score out of 100. So you get that on an event level and then individual session level as well. So if you were to, um, like I said, sim uh, really quickly and easily compare sessions and evaluate yeah. uh, different events, especially if you're running multiple events throughout the year, that's one quantifiable number that you can just grab 
uh, share with the team and uh, use kind of uh, plan your the rest of your event portfolio as well. So I think that's been a quite um, useful tool for a lot of our clients. That's fantastic. It's great to hear about as well and a bit of an insight into what happens under the hood, uh, which I think is really important. Um, so we've, we've gone through quite a few different features of the platform, you know, leading up to the analytics point there. I think it would be really interesting. Like, I know people love the platform and I've seen, I've seen them use it uh, and engage with it and, and want to use it more. So what, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you guys at Glissa if they'd like to explore the platform a bit more? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. We'd love to hear <laughs> from you. Um, probably the easiest way is to go to our website, which is glissa.com. And then if you put slash demo at the end, D-E-M-O, then that will take you to a page which you can just quickly put in your details and we'll sort you out of the demo. Um, we're on LinkedIn, obviously, and Twitter, but yeah, hit the website and you'll see a book a demo button or just put slash demo at the end. Uh, the bonus question, uh, if Glissa was a music artist, what artist would you be and why? We, ha we had a real laugh with this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We actually put it to our entire business during a company meeting, which we run on Glissa, obviously, and we've been using tools to put this question out there. Um, and then people got to vote on who they thought was the best answer. Okay. And the one that came up was David Bowie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there was a reason for it. Um, so he was obviously credited with adapting and remaining relevant throughout yeah. changing times. And that was what the team really went for was that we existed before COVID times and we've adapted and we have continued to adapt the platform and will continue to adapt the platform um, in the coming months and years, no doubt, to remain really relevant. And I thought that was a really, really cool idea. I mean, there were some atrocious other suggestions <laughs> that I dare even say um but that one we thought was a uh, was really good and it did get the most votes so obviously the whole team agreed with that too yeah <laughs> it's a great question it really made us laugh and just it's good to make you think differently about things you have to yeah. think differently. and i think that's a really uh, keynote to end on in terms of how the industry needs to evolve and take things forward it, it's about thinking differently and thinking outside the box and utilizing technology that's to hand um and hopefully you know this is one of uh, many of these tech bite sessions will be running just to give everyone a bit of a flavor you know to, to the other platforms that are out there and the other technologies that are coming on board i think that's going to be really important as we move into 2021 and beyond so i just want to take the time to say thanks to both of you for for having a chat to me i uh, appreciate yeah. that it's been a real joy. We love working with yeah. you guys too. You know, oh, it's absolutely. a really great um, partnership that we've set up, and we're super happy to be included in this today. Yeah, so. yeah thank um, you for having us. Um, yeah, uh, just to kind of uh, build on what Vanessa said, thanks for having us. And it's been absolutely amazing working with you guys. And uh, I think you've become experts in, in the platform. <laughs> it took you about one training session, Tom, if, I, if I'm correct. So uh, yeah, I guess that's credit to how intuitive it is though as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not the uh, sharpest tool in the box, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was nice. And you know, I got a hold of that quite quickly as did the team. I think they all really enjoyed working on it. So yeah, looking forward to working with you all, you know, through the course yeah. of the year and, and beyond. So yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to see what uh, 2021 brings as well um, in terms of uh, all these new virtual events and um, hybrid as well, uh, which is going to be like an, an exciting, um, exciting time for the, for the industry, I think.